progr- it's, it's just the progression of the animal that, that really is that's it's uh, it's what nature is all about. So, and you know, you were talking about baseball money. Um, what what is the most unnecessary thing in baseball? Post game reports. <laughs> yeah, I've seen this. I'm. I said that years ago. Monday. What's, the, what's the point of having having post game yeah. reports? Yeah, I mean, it's it, no, I, and and as, it, I'll expound on the point that I made Monday. Is because you're sitting there tired, and they're showing you commercials of where you're now going to spend your fast food dollar. And these these guys jump all over, these companies jump all over that. And, you know, I want to hear Bob Lorenz give me, you know, what he thought the seventh inning should be. Oh, stop. I mean, I'd rather go cut the lawn than listen to that stuff. I actually had uh, some Wendy's delivery today, so. <laughs> you, paid twice, you paid twice the price? Well, I was, at, I was up in the sticks today in Glen Cove, so. so. Oh, boy. Well, so that was uh, the only thing delivering. I couldn't leave where I was. Wait a second. They don't have pizza in Glen Cove? No, no, no. I was in. I was north of the village. Like okay, all right. Oh, Bayville and stuff. Like no, that. no, 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 no. Like uh, Glen Cove Mansion. Oh, very nice. Oh, you oh, up, up with the Russians? So oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were doing it. some spying over there. Hit the nail on the head, huh? <laughs> yeah. When you talk about cra- you, you talk about horrible security. I actually had to do a concert at uh, Clark Gardens. It's a small facility in Albertson, and you know the concert starts at seven. The guy, the guy was a Billy Joel impersonator. Mike Joel Judas. Uh, no, uh, the, the Pat Farrell. Uh, I again, I'm on this. I, I'm security. I never leave. But these people that pull in at ten minutes after the concert starts, waving that stupid blue handicap thing. Where's my? Whoa, whoa! whoa you want handicap? You get here fifteen minutes before the concert. <laughs> oh, it's got it. And then they wanted to. Then when they you make them walk, you walk. They want to debate. That they can I go in if I find a spot, uh, lady, you're handicapped. You want to walk across IU Willis Road? Go ahead, roll the dice, baby. I don't give it. <laughs> wow. No, no, it's just like I said, it's just absolute stupidity. So. No, no. You know what's funny? Last night was um, was uh, Greg Bird's uh, Grand Slam. Now, Dave. It came off the foul pole. Yeah, and, and they oh. and they they spelt it F O W L. Oh yeah. Now, Dave. Oh. Do you you live by last I checked? You live by Averill Park, right? Oh, you live by Averill Park. You live by Averill Park, right, Dave? I live by Rath Park. Oh, Rath. Okay. All right. Never mind. I can throw. I can throw a rock and hit Rath. Park. That's what I remember. <laughs> okay. So okay, because I have to go to a swim meet at Averill on Saturday morning, and I remember a baseball field where you could throw a rock from. That was Rath. Okay. Got yeah, it. Averill. Yeah, that's. Um, yeah, they. Have, they uh, in fact, the uh, town of Hempstead does a lot of Caribbean nights down there. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, no, not here. <laughs> we get, I think we got Tony Avino doing the best of Frank Sinatra. I don't even know who, you know, as someone who's hosted the Billy Joel show since Piano Man, since 2006, there is literally a pecking order of, of, sev- of six um, Billy Joel tribute bands on Long Island. Like, I, I, I have to. Like, it's, I'm required to know what they are, what the pecking order is. And last night, I'm, I was walking uh, around Roosevelt Field because my younger guy was at Chaminade Swim Camp. So my older guy's like, let's go to the mall. You know, we got to kill an hour and a half. So we went, and David Clark's Songs in the Attic was going to be playing at 7 o'clock there on, on the purple parking deck by Dick's Sporting Goods outside. And purple parking deck? Yeah. So it's painted purple? With- yeah, I don't know. It's just what the sign. Said and there was a K. My my son said there was a K ninety eight van or something, but um, but it was outside. I wasn't going outside, but he's like, uh, where is that on the uh, list? I'm like, well, on Long Island they're number three, but they're also number two because that guy uh, Clark is the Billy of the band uh, that. That that uh, that has uh, the, they call the Lords of Flatbush that has Liberty DeVito and Richie Cannata and um, Russell Javers in it. So the three guys that were in Billy's original band are in it. So he's the he's the Billy of that band. So that bumps him up to the second that when he's with that band. But but I guess Songs in the Attic actually fourth because number three is Wade Preston in the Moving Out band. Those were guys who were in the Moving Out Broadway production. This Pat Farrell guy you mentioned isn't even on the list. So I guess I got to put him seventh. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, like, like a, well I, again, I have no idea. It was, uh, but it, it was it was actually rather popular. Um, but again, if it's free, it's me. So everybody shows up at their chair. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So what are you going to do? Uh, that's right. <laughs> and let's let's salute the Yankees all year long. When they hit a home run, they go around the bases. They don't look at the pitcher. They don't look at the other dugout. <laughs> 
you know, I mean, it just, it's, it's nice to see a little bit of class. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 not, not in the announcing booth. <laughs> how, about, how about the fact that it's the typical Brian Cashman misdirection that since pitching isn't there, uh, Verlander hasn't materialized, and both Hap and Hamels got roughed up last week, which I think means nothing, but they both got roughed up last week. And weekend. again tonight. And, and tonight, too. Uh, yeah. Hap did. That's the old I don't want to get traded uh, thing. Um, th- it becomes now that the Yankees are going to get Machado. No. Which is ridiculous. Because, and I can see it happening because there's enough you know, smoke around it that there's some fire there. But they can get Machado for money in the offseason and not a prospect. So what, what, they, they don't need his bat. It's just one of those things where well, well, there's no pitcher worth trading for and the price of pitching is too high of the, of the big guys and they're not, on the t- they're not available. So I'll go for Machado. There's, that's not going to happen. Why would you trade it? I'm just making up a Justice Sheffield or whomever. That's just stupid. Just for the price of money, you can get him in the offseason, Machado. Now, watch all the jaws fall. I don't think Machado's that good a player. Oh, he's no, no, no. He, he's a horrible shortstop. And as far as hitting the ball, the only reason he builds up stats 30 and 90 is is, is because he, he bats, what, 600? He, he's, he's in every game. Which, I'll, I'll give him that. which matters. Yeah, I, Chris, I understand that. But when you, but unfortunately, when you're in a, you know, a dynamo like the Yankees, we don't mind getting our other players off the bench. And you, you're going to bury Andrew off of him? Because you, he has to, you have to insist that he, he's not going to go to shortstop and mess up a playoff game. You've got to insist that he's a third. Speaking of third base, you know who's playing third base tonight for the Mets? Batista. Well, yeah. Well, he was playing. He was supposed to play third base for the Braves for this beginning of the year. Oh. I, you know, with regard to Andujar, I'm thinking that the Yankees. There's more talk about the Yankees including him in deals than ever before. So maybe they're just. You know, the Yankees know when to keep a guy and when not to keep a guy. Because it's the, it's the Didi problem. Like, um, if you're going to acquire Machado, if you're the Yankees and you acquire Machado, you have it built in already. You know you are signing him in the offseason. It's already been established with his agent when you acquire him because certain things are, uh, decisions are made and everything. Uh, so they would know Machado. But it would be easier to move Didi, whether it be off the team or to a different position, in the offseason than it would be in the regular season. So that would be a thing. Well, see. The, the conundrum is the Yankees are, b- are below the the, um, the 197. Right now, if they go over to 197, they, they, when they sign him next year, I'm just throwing a number out there. Say it's 300 million. That becomes four, uh, 450 million. There are some crazy. I was looking at what teams get charged. Like if you're over the cap three right. years in a row, the money it costs you. It's mm-hmm. crazy money. So yeah, there's uh... no. I mean that's and, 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 you know you you know one of those ride the horses that you have. Go out, uh, get a couple of free agent, pit, uh, get a couple of late uh, season pitchers. You know, roll the dice, get two of them. If one of them works out, you're right, fine. right, because you don't know. I mean, Sabathia's pitching well now, but you don't know. And and Tanaka is good, but you don't know. It's, you, you can't. You can't. And Severino's having an all world year, but you don't know. It's one year, so they got to get enough guys that hope it sticks and just have capable guys that are out there. Basically, what you got to have for the Yankees because they know they're going to the playoffs. Just a matter of is it a one game? Oh playoff? yeah, exactly. Exactly. And if it is a one game playoff, that if it's a one game playoff and they win, great, they continue on. But now they have got their number two pitcher pitching. So, what do you I do there? Faith. I have a lot of faith in Sonny Gray for about an inning. <laughs> he looked good last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we got to have somebody talk to him all the time. So, you know, and, you know, it's funny though. Tyler Wade at his first home run. I, I love in baseball the silent the silent treatment. treatment. It was it was a bad job. Well, I guess because they were up five nothing when it happened, but it was it was a bad job of the silent treatment. Yeah. And, and he didn't seem to get it. That he came in expecting, and he was like reading guys like and not understanding. This is the silent treatment. You get that for your first home run. Yeah, so. and you, you know what the funniest thing in baseball is the three thousand hit. And you got a smart coach, an old, you know, an older coach. And when somebody gets there, say it's a single, and they go it's a double, and the guy stands in second base, and they, as a courtesy, roll the three thousand hit into the uh, person. Yeah. That's always great when the coach brings an extra ball out and flips the extra ball into the crowd. Right. You well, know, and the kids, the kids look at well, the kid well, 3,000 hits. It, it, it doesn't bother me anymore, but it used to bother me when, it, when, when uh, you get your first major league hit or whatever, your home run or, or even that 3,000 hit, and they would throw the ball off, and it would get dirty. And I, I, it would bother me. Like, that's not dirt from the play. The play that the ball was pristine, and now you're getting it all yeah. messed up by throwing it off the field or whatever. What if you're just rolling from the grass? Yeah, it's, uh, that, that always bothered me. But now it doesn't, but because it's uh, the ball is the ball no matter what. It's about the ball, but still, it's just not the way it was. You know what I found out? There's a guy who sits like behind 
the like batter's box or dugout or whatever, he stamps the balls during every game. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you know that, and, and, and to say that this ball's from this game. <laughs> well, I guess they, you know that's the way that memorabilia has it, become yeah. such a thing. Yeah, they've got to do that. Well, did you, you know, you ever see that the home plate umpire what he has to do before the game with the with the balls? Because the balls come off the way you see them when you buy a, a ball, you know, shiny and white, whatever. But they got to mix up that Mississippi mud. Mississippi mud. Mississippi mud. They got to mix up all the balls before the game. With the fan boats too. <laughs> The fan boats. Well, that's true. That's where they they get it from yeah. the the delta and the silt and all that. Yeah. And we also we, and then we still have ball boys running out there. Charlie Finley, where are you? The but, guy that actually thought about putting the hoist behind the umpire. Where, where did I see recently that had a bullpen car? And I was so the, the I think it was an interleague game the Mets played against somebody, and they had a bullpen car where the relievers came in the bullpen car. And I was like, that's finally it's been brought back. Because one time I remember when we first started doing sports talk here, we looked up to see when the last bullpen car was used, and I think it was 1992 by the California then California Angels. So uh, whoever, remember the Yankees pinstripe Dotson. P- the Dotson, sure pinstripe. That was awesome. And who who, who was the one guy that uh, who, who, number 28 who refused, who who rather would just walk onto the field with his jacket. Sparky Lyle. Yeah. And they would play? Spar- Pop in circumstance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it creates jobs bullpen card. It, uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it lower our unemployment rate. And somebody can boast about that. <laughs> well, yeah, we need a security guard in the front seat, right? Uh, yeah, so we got the drive for the security guard. Right, that's two jobs. <laughs> Never ends. I, I, I want. I know you guys were talking before about the um, All Star Game. Every team having a uh, a player on. I, I always love that as a as, as a player as a, a fan of a bad team. The the Mets in the late seventies, early eighties. So I was really feeling the Yankees at that time. But uh, it was. It's good to see you. you know, it's, it also that you learn from uh, Bull Durham. Baseball is more democratic. You know, let every, every team ever. And the rosters expand anyway. It's like twenty eight or whatever it is, or thirty in the All Star Game. So you can allow for that. And the, and the snubs. Everyone's feeling. Calling out with an injury these days with the with the All Star Game anyway, so you're going to be able to bring somebody in. It's, it's it's when you don't have a logical guy, but this year there seems to be a logical guy. However, when Cameron was reading those names, I got to tell you, there were about six or seven guys I never heard of. Some of whom were starting. So it's like okay. Well, the one thing I found out, you know, with the Mets, do you know who the number two guy that, that would have gone to the All Star Game? Oh, well, would it be Nemo? I mean, no, who? Mr. Met. Oh, Mr. Met. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah but, but they didn't want to give him a big head. Too bad he doesn't have a middle finger. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> we found that yeah, out. I got a mosquito bite on my middle finger. You want to see it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'll, 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 I'll wax nostalgic. Um, who's your favorite pitcher to watch? And again, the old days was so much fun, but who's the one pitcher you, I don't relieve really starting? Tom Candiotti. Oh. No, I just, wanted, I just want to say his name. <laughs> well, he was a knuckleballer. He was fun to watch. I know. Well, side on him. Side on him. Oh, well, they, these guys have never seen a cider. Like a, a yeah, Kent Tacovi or a damn Quisenberry. Yeah. Balfour. Yeah. Ted Abernathy. Yeah, Grant Balfour, I guess, does it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ted Abernathy. You, but you know who my all time favorite was? I'm telling you, just for fun, was Louis Tion. Oh, I was going to say, well, uh, Louis Tion, when he would pitch, and I'm showing the guys right now, because th- he would. Turn completely. Turn, I'm walking away from. The, I'm moving completely away from the microphone when I do it. But he would turn completely around, away from home plate, almost go. He would go to like center field, sort of, then throw the ball. So was it Young Young Kim a sidearm? Yeah, he was. He was. Well, there's a, there's a difference. There's there's side armors and there's submariners. Submariners. And yeah. Bun Young Kim was a submariner. And you want to know what the difference is? And I got pitch underhand. No, I got. I'm showing it to you on a, on radio medium. But this is a submariner. You start with your hand back like this, and you snap. Like anybody who remembers the, it was the 2001 World Series, right? Yankees, uh, Yankees, Devil Ray, uh, Yankees, Steinbeck was Kim, right? He was the home runs he gave up to. Who gave up? Who had the Yankee home runs against Kim? It was same guy, wasn't it? I'm trying to think. In the 2001 World Series, Kim gave up those two big home runs. Same guy, same same location, same everything. Who who was that? Well, it's, it's the Yankees, but it's way before Cameron's time. He would have been like two. Oh yeah, two and a half, <laughs> three. Yeah. yeah. So and the, and the Yankees lost that World Series, so it didn't matter. But of course, uh, Dave can remember yeah. that World Series. Who was who had the big Yankee home runs against Kim in the 2001? Well, it wasn't Raul, was it? No. No. 2001. 2001. Yeah. Was it Jeter? Was it Jeter both times? I thought, yeah. They were huge. I, I was I mean, thinking were, Jeter. They were huge home runs, and uh, it was and, and they went back to the well both times and both results same result both times so. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, we'll see that this year, so we'll see what happens. So. I, I, I can't believe you know the Diamondbacks are 
Playing Chad, really, really well. Chad Bradford. <laughs> Chad Bradford. Well, he was with Oakland. Yeah, he was. A, he was a. Was he a submariner? Or was yeah, he a submariner? Yeah, so that's the. I was going right. to say he was an Oakland submariner. Yeah, it's him. And I say, I, I said it to you about. Uh,